Okay, students, we are back. We are in our unit two notes and we finished our microwave and our knife safety notes. We are gonna move into kitchen equipment and tools. So you are gonna wanna be on pages 35 and pages 36 and let's see 37 as well okay we're going to fill in those three pages today with these notes so let's go ahead and dive right in with some equipment and tools okay so our first um equipment that you're going to want to do is find your bread knife let me see this is on page 35 it's the third from the bottom this is used to cut bread, okay? It has a serrated or sawtooth edge for cutting bread. This is really, really handy when you are cutting especially warm bread because it's going to saw through that crusty top and it won't smush down your bread. So you're gonna get this nice, delicious um, slice of bread. Your colander, let's see, that's on page 37. This is used for draining liquid from larger foods like pasta. Our cutting board, this is on page 32nd, 36, excuse me, it's the third from the top. This protects our counter and our knife when we cut, okay? It should be plastic to prevent cross-contamination because wood really holds in bacteria like salmonella when you're using it for chicken. So again, your bread knife, your colander, and your cutting board. Our chef's or our French knife, let me see where I've got that. Hmm. Page 37, it's the second from the top. This is used simply for chopping, dicing, cutting, literally everything. I use three knives in the kitchen, okay, and we're going to talk about them. So our chef's or our French knife, it's the same thing, used for chopping or dicing. Our baking pan, I don't know if you guys even have that one. I don't think you do, but a baking pan is great to have just to bake food in the oven. Our ladle. This is on page 35, second from the bottom. We want to scoop liquids. It has a small bowl at the end of a long handle that's used to serve liquid foods, like soup. Our meat thermometer, let's see, you guys don't have that one. It's used to measure the internal temperature of meat. This is really important for when you work in the industry. If you work in the industry, everything that you serve should be checked with a meat thermometer. Same with an oven thermometer. You want to use, the, um, use this to measure the internal temperature of the oven. A turner. You guys might know this as a spatula, okay? This is on page 36. It's the very top one. Um, we call it a pancake turner in this class because the state of Utah wants you to know it as a pancake turner, but you may know it as a spatula, okay? This is used to flip um, lift and turn flat foods like a hamburger or a pancake over. That's where it got its name. All right, pastry blender, that's our next one. Um, you guys might think it looks like a potato masher. That's not what it's for. Please don't mash potatoes with this. You'll ruin your pastry blender. This is the second from the bottom on page 36. We want to cut, we use this to cut in fat into our dry ingredients. So we want to use this when we want to create really flaky layers and pastries, okay, like biscuits and pie crust. Our paring knife, page 35, this is the very center of that. It's the fourth one from the top or the bottom, okay? It's right in the middle. This is used to cut small food items and to peel the skin off of them. Um, I love a paring knife. I use it all the time in the kitchen. Refrigerator and freezer thermometers, we use these to measure the internal temperature or of your free of your fridge, excuse me, or your freezer. And I'm sure you're wondering, why do you need an oven or a fridge or freezer thermometer? When you work in the industry, you have to have a backup. You just do. So that's why they exist. Rubber scraper or a rubber spatula, you might know it as both. This is on page 35. It's the third from the top. Please label it as a rubber scraper. It's important that you do. The state of Utah for your state skills test does call it a rubber scraper. It has that little rubber end and it's used to scrape foods out of bowls and measuring cups and that's why it's called a rubber scraper. I love using this to make an omelet. That's just always what I use it for. Our flat edge spatula, this is on that same page right above our rubber scraper. It's used to uh, level off measurements, okay? Whenever you do your measurements, maybe you've got a cup of flour, you wanna take your straight edge metal spatula and just completely level it off. Scrape it across the top. It's gonna get rid of all the extra flour that you've got in that measuring cup so that you have a true one cup 
okay? If you don't have a straight edge metal spatula at home, I recommend getting one if you love to bake, um, especially if you love to bake. But if not, try using a um, butter knife. That will work for you. All right, a strainer. This guy, let's see. I don't see if you've got one. I don't think you've got one. Yep. All right, but I do want to tell you that the strainer is different from the colander. The strainer has wire mesh that separates liquids from food and it usually has small fine holes. This is going to be different because you're not going to use it to separate the liquid from your food and keep the food. Typically, this is great when you're making a stock and you've got to pull stuff out. Um, I use it as a sifter at home. Strainers have many uses, definitely worth investing in. Your tongs. You've got tongs here on page 36, third from the top. This is used to pick up round objects, okay? You want to, it's great when you've got really awkward sized foods because you can pick it up, move it around. Our peeler is on that same page 36. Um, it's on the very bottom. This is used to remove uh, the skin from fruits and veggies. Very useful. You don't have to just use your paring knife. And then we've got our wire whisk. This is used to blend liquids like eggs and milk. I do want to tell you that this was invented just to blend eggs and milk. So it's super important that that's what you use it for. All right, guys. So I know that we haven't done some of them and I just don't have them on the slides, but I'm going to go through them right now with you. So page 35, at the very top, we've got something called a wooden spoon. And your wooden spoon at home might just be plastic. I know that in our kitchen labs, we have moved to plastic. It's just so much um, nicer, so much more nice when you've got a plastic one. You don't have to worry so much about foodborne illness. This is just simply used for stirring, mixing, you know, that kind of stuff. And then at the bottom of page 35, we have measuring spoons, okay? Measuring spoons are used to measure small amounts. Okay, we, we haven't really talked about measuring spoons yet, but we will. So let's go ahead and flip to page 36. We have missed our rolling pin. This is right underneath our pancake turner. Our rolling pin is used to flatten doughs. That's all. We're just gonna roll it over, flatten doughs. It can be made out of wood or made out of plastic. Either one is fine. All right, page 37. We have missed, oh, there is a meat thermometer on this page. I was mistaken. So make sure that you've got this um, to check the temperature of meat and always check it in the thickest part. You want to avoid the bone and the fat because they're going to be extra hot, okay? All right, underneath your meat thermometer, you have a slotted spoon. Yes, that's what that plastic spoon with all the holes in it is called. It's a slotted spoon. We use this to separate solid food from our liquid food, okay? So maybe you want a part of the soup that's more solid like maybe you've got a nice minestrone soup and you want more beans and pasta than you do want broth this would be a great tool to get that underneath that we've got some measuring cups and i want you to say dry measuring cups on these these are used to measure large amounts of dry ingredients that's what they're for for dry ingredients only and right underneath our measuring cups we've got our liquid measuring cup this is used to measure liquids. A liquid qualifies as anything that's pourable, okay? So great tools here. I hope that you um, can identify them. Um, and I will see you tomorrow with some more information.